Corelli's doubts about Maliki grew more acute over the course of the summer. It was late one night when one of his staff officers stopped Corelli in the hallways at Alfau Palace. There was highly classified information that he needed to share as soon as possible. It's bad, the officer advised. The next day, Corelli sat in a windowless, secure room on the palace's second floor, reading transcripts of translated conversations involving Maliki. The United States has never publicly acknowledged listening in on the conversations of senior officials. There were late-night telephone calls from the Prime Minister to one of his aides, a woman named Basima al jaidri who had served as a civilian in Saddam's military. As they conversed, she urged Maliki to remove certain Sunni commanders in the army and replace them with Shiite officers. It was clear that Maliki was under tremendous pressure from Shiite political parties to fashion the army into a sectarian force. Corelli got updates every day on highly classified intelligence, but rarely was the information so revealing. When Casey read the transcripts the following day in his office, he, too, looked astounded. It was standard practice for Casey or his staff to update the Prime Minister before a sensitive military operation. A few weeks later, another classified intelligence report showed the cell phone and text messaging traffic from Maliki's office after he and his aides received briefings about a pending raid. Minutes after the update, people in Maliki's office were making calls to pass on key details, the intended target, where the U.S. forces were headed, which bridges and roads would be blocked. It wasn't clear who was responsible for the leaks, or exactly whom they were telling, but it certainly looked as if they were tipping off potential targets. The report stung Corelli. He'd made it a personal policy to treat Iraqis as full partners, and here was strong proof that his assumptions about them were flawed. The leaks from Maliki's office weren't entirely surprising. He was new and inexperienced. He had been a virtual unknown, at least to U.S. officials, when he was finally chosen after a five-month impasse. As a compromise candidate from the tiny Dawa party, Maliki's greatest challenge in his first months in office was to hold together his shaky Shiite coalition, which included supporters in Parliament who were opposed to cooperating with the Americans. In the best possible light, tipping off fellow Shiites about raids was a way for Maliki to build credibility with a powerful constituency that he needed to survive Iraq's unforgiving politics. And official American policy reiterated by every senior official from Bush down, was to help Maliki succeed. But Casey and Corelli needed to do something. They couldn't confront Maliki directly without risking a major rupture with their new partner. But they couldn't let the leaks continue either. In the future, they decided to delay briefing him and his aides until minutes before a sensitive operation was planned to begin.